Okay, so we're going to continue reading To Kill a Mockingbird. We're at the bottom of page 198 on the PDF. Hannah Hanny, will you read, please? Yes, Miss. Tom, go back once more to Mr. Ewell, said Atticus. Did he say anything to you? Not anything, sir. He might have said not something, but I weren't there. That's all do, Atticus cut in sharply. What you did here? Who was he talking to? Mr. Finch, he were talking and looking at Miss Mayella. They then you ran. I sure did, sh did so. Why did you run? I was scared, sir. Why were you scared, Mr. Finch? If you was a nigger like me, you would be scared too. Atticus sat down. Mr. Gilmer was making his way to the witness stand. But before he got there, Mr. Link does draw Mr. Link these rose from the audience and announced. I just want the whole lot of you to know one thing right now. That boy's worked for me eight years, and I ain't had a speak or trouble out him. Not a speak. Shut your mouth, sir. Judge Taylor was wide awake and roaring. He was also pink in the face. His speech was miraculously unimpaired by this cigar. Lindy's, he yelled, if you have anything you want to say, you can say it under oath. And, and at the proper time. But until they get out of this room, you hear me. Get out of this room, sir. You hear me? I'll be damned if I listen to this case again. Judge Taylor looked daggers at Atticus, as if the daring him to speak. But Atticus had ducked his head and was laughing into his lap. I remembered something he had said about Judge Taylor's ex-cathedral remarks, something exceeding his duty. But that few lawyers ever did anything about them. I looked at Jim, but Jim shook his head. It ain't like one of the jurymen got up and started talking, said. I think it'd been different then. Mr. Link was just disturbing the peace or something. Judge Taylor told the reporter to expunge anything he happened, he happened to have written down after Mr. Finch. If you were a nigger like me, you'd be scared too. And told the jury to disregard the interruption. He looked suspiciously down the middle aisle and waited, I suppose, for Mr. Lingdees to affect total departure. Then he said, go ahead, Mr. Glimmer. Okay, Hannah, stop right here. S explain to us what is what has happened here. Mr. Um, Mr. Link um, uh, stood up uh, in, the, in the trial and said that uh, these people worked for me and they didn't make any trouble. And they were saying, um, so Mr. someone said, Mr. Finch, if you was a nigger like me, you'd be scared too. This was yes, who, who is that uh, person that sentence. said that, yeah. Hannah? Mr. Glimmer. No, here. Mr. Glimmer. No. Tom Robinson. Tom okay. Robinson tells Mr. Finch or Atticus, if you was a nigger like me, you'd be scared too. Okay. So okay. at this point, Atticus finished, has finished questioning Tom Robinson. So now it's Mr. Gilmer's turn to uh, ask him questions. And as he got up to make his way to the witness stand, Mr. Link Diaz stood up 
and told him, he said, I just want everybody to know one thing right now. That boy, talking about Tom Robinson, has worked for me for eight years and I have never had one bit of trouble from him. So this made the judge angry because remember during the trial, no one is allowed to ever stand up and say anything unless they have the permission of the judge. Yes, he disrespected, he disrespected Judge Taylor. Yes, exactly right. This is a disrespect to the judge and the court. Yes. So at this point, what does Judge Taylor do, Hannah, to Mr. Link D Diaz? He shouted at him and shot him, uh, shot his mouth. Yes, and he told him to get out. He, he threw him yes. out of the courtroom, okay? Yes. So uh, they noticed, uh, Scout and Jim noticed that Atticus was holding his head down and laughing, okay? Uh, and he sa she says, I remember something he had said about Judge Taylor's ex cathedra remarks sometimes exceeding his duty, but that few lawyers ever did anything about them. I looked at Jim, but Jim shook his head. So Jim is explaining to Scout here, uh, because Scout thinks he's in a lot of trouble, but Jim says, it's not like one of the jury people or jury men got up and started talking. He said, I think Mr. Link was just disturbing the peace of something. So Jim doesn't see that what Mr. Link did was so serious, okay? So at this point, remember in every courtroom, there is what they call a court reporter. And this court reporter is a man or a woman that has a little machine that's kind of like a typing, uh, a typewriter. And they type out every single word that the lawyers and the people on the witness stand say. So yes. the judge, after this happened, the judge looked at the uh, court reporter and told him or her to expunge or to delete anything that he or she had written down after Mr. Finch, uh, uh, after Tom Robinson told Mr. Finch, if you were a nigger like me, you'd be scared too. He wants that removed from the court records, okay? All right, uh, start here, Hannah, I'm sorry, thank you. Two things. You were given 30 days once for disorderly conduct, Robinson, asked Mr. Gilmer. Yes, sir. What's this? What, what, what would the nigger look like when you got through with him? He'd beat me, Mr. Gilmer. Yes, but you were convict, weren't you? Atticus raised his head. It was a mis misdemeanor. 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 And it is in the record, judge. I thought he sounded tired. Witness, I'll answer though. Judge Taylor, just as really. Yes, sir, I got 30 days. I knew that Mr. Gilmer would sincerely tell the jury that anyone who has convicted of disorderly conduct could easily have had it in his heart to take advantage of Miss of Maella Ewo. That was the only reason he cared. Reason like that, that helped. Robinson, you are pretty good at busting up shiver robes and kindling with one hand, aren't you? Yes, sir, I reckon so. Strong enough to choke the breath out of a woman and sling her to the floor. I never, I never done that, sir. But you are strong enough to. I reckon so, sir. Had you eye on her a long time, hadn't you, boy? No, sir, I never looked at her. Then, then was mighty generous of you. You had course at home after your regular work, didn't you? When you skip this part, yes, Anna. sir. Then you were mighty polite to do all the chopping and hauling for her, weren't you, boy? I was just trying to help her out, sir. That was mighty generous of you. You had chores at home after your regular work, didn't you? Yes, sir. Why didn't you do them instead of Miss Ewells? I done them both, sir. 
You must have been pretty busy. Why? Why what, sir? Why were you so anxious to do that woman's chores? Tom Robinson, Tom Robinson hesitated, searching for an answer. Looked, he didn't look like she didn't have nobody to help her. Like I says, with Mr. Ewell and seven children on the place, boy. Well, I say it looked like they, they never had known. You did not. You did all this shopping and work for her sheer goodness, boy. Try to help her, I says. Mr. Glimmer smiled grimly at the jury. You are a mighty good fellow. It seems that all this for none, not one penny. Yes, sir. I felt right sorry for her. She seemed to try more than the rest of them. You felt sorry for her? You felt sorry for he? Mr. Gilmer seemed ready to rise to, to the ceiling. The witness realized his mistake and shifted uncomfortably in the chair. But the damage was done. Below us, nobody liked Tom Robinson's answer. Mr. Mr. Gilman paused a long time to let it sink in. Now, you went by the house as usual, last November 21st, he said, and she asked you to come in and bust up a chiffre rope? No, sir. Do you deny that you went by the house? No, sir. She said she had something for me to do, to do inside the house. She said she asked you to bust up a chiffre rope. Is that right? No, sir, it ain't. Then you, you say she's lying, boy. Atticus was on his feet, but Tom Robinson didn't need him. I don't say she's lying, Mr. Gilmer. I say she's mistaken in her mind. To the next 10 questions, as Mr. Gilmer reviewed Mayla's version of events, the witness's steady answers was that she was mistaken in her mind. Didn't Mr. Ewell run you of the place, boy? No, sir. I don't think he did. Don't think what do you mean? I mean I didn't stay long enough for him to run me off. You are very candid about this. Why did you run so fast? I say I was scared, sir. If you had a clear cons conscience, why were you scared? Like I said before, it weren't safe for any nigger to be in a fix like that. But you weren't in a fix. You testified that you were resisting Miss Ewell. You were so scared that she'd hurt you. You ran a big buck like you? No, sir. I scared I'd be in a court just like I am now. Scared of arrest? Scared you had to have to face up to what you did? No, sir. Scared I'd have to face up to what I did do. I didn't do. Are you being impudent to me, boy? No, sir. I didn't go to be. This was as much as I heard of Mr. Gilmer's cross-examination because Jim made me talk Dill out. For some reason, Dill has started crying and couldn't stop. Quietly at first, then his sobs were heard by several people in the balcony. Jem said if I didn't go with him, he'd make me. And Reverend Sykes said I'd better go. I went. Dill had seemed to be all right that day. Nothing wrong with him. But I guess he hadn't fully recovered from running away. Ain't you feeling good? I asked when, you, when we reached the bottom of the stairs. Dill tried to pull him himself together as we ran down the south steps. Mr. Lingdees was lonely figure on the top step. Anything happened, Scout? He asked me as we went by. No, sir. I answered over my shoulder. Dill here, he sick. Come on under the trees. Come on out under the trees, I said. He got you, I accept. We chose the fast 
the fattest live oak, and we sat under it. It was just him I could stand. Dill said, Who's Tom? That old Mr. Gilmer doing him, that away talking so hateful to him? Dill, that's his job. Why if we didn't have prosecutors? Well, prosecutors. Prosecutors. Well, we couldn't have defense attorneys, I reckon. Dill exalted patiently. I know all that, Scout. It was the way he said it made me sick, plain sick. He's supposed to act that way. Dill, he was cross. He didn't act that way when. Dill, those were his own witness. Well, Mr. Finch didn't act the, the, the way to male and old man, Ewell, when he cross-examined them. The way the man called him boy all the time and, and sneered at him and looked around the jury every time he answered. Well, Dill, after all, he's just a Negro. I don't care one speak, one speck. It ain't right. Somehow, it ain't right to do. To do him that way. Hasn't anybody got any business talking like that? It just makes me sick. That's just Mr. Gilmer's way. Dell, he, he does him all that way. You've never seen him get good in, down on what yet. Why? When will today Mr. Gilmer seem to me like he wasn't half trying? They, dim, they do him all that way, most lawyer, I mean. Mr. Finch doesn't. He's not an example. Still he is. I was trying to grope in my memory for a sharp phrase of Miss Molly's at Atkinson. I had it. He's the same in the courtroom as he is on the public streets. That's not what I mean, said Dill. I know what you mean, boy, said a voice behind us. We thought it came from the tree trunk, but it belonged to Mr. Dolphus Raymond. He peered around the trunk at us. You aren't thi thin, hide it. It just makes you sick, doesn't it? Okay, Hannah, you can stop there. All right, explain to us what we have learned so far. Okay, uh, Mr. Gilmer... It was um, asking Tom Robinson and he was telling to him boy and he was taught, we, he was watching the Z, the jury and then he uh, um, Tom Robinson uh, said always said she was mistaken in her mind but then they got sick and she scout and they got out and they found Mr. Can you hear me, Hannah? Yes, miss. Oh, okay. So when they, they went found... outside, they found yes. the man on the top step that the judge had, Mr. Link Diaz. You remember yes. when the judge threw him out of the courtroom? So yes. he's outside on the top step. Uh, so when... Scout gets Deal outside. What does she discover, Hannah, that Deal is so upset about? He was so upset about how um, how Doc, how Mr. Gilmer was treating Tom Robinson. Yes, exactly. He spoke to him, if you notice, almost every question or sentence that he said to Tom Robinson, he ended it in a very disrespectful way by yes. calling Tom Robinson boy. It was boy this and boy that. And that just shows disrespect right there, okay? He's a grown married man with children and Mr. Gilmer had no right to be addressing him as a boy, all right? And Deal found this very hard to understand. And he even told, uh, the scout is trying to explain to Deal that this is how lawyers talk to people in courtrooms. But Deal's not buying that. He found it to be very disrespectful, and he even said that Atticus doesn't act like that. Uh, and at one point, I want you to notice what uh, Scout says. 
Scout tells him, we'll deal. And he's, she's talking about Tom Robinson. After all, he's just a Negro. What does that mean when Scout said he's just a Negro? She meant it isn't important to, uh, to be sad at, at this man. Exactly. She, she also uh, is giving us the idea that uh, Tom Robinson is not that important because she said he's just a Negro, okay? Like he is uh, lower than someone else. So even the way that uh, Atticus has raised Scout, she still has these ideas also. She has not been, uh, she didn't learn the lesson that Atticus has been trying to teach her and Jim. Uh, in other words, not to treat black folks any different than you would treat white folks, okay? So uh, here after Deal says that Mr. Finch doesn't treat people like that, Scout has a hard time explaining to Deal. She said, he's not an example, Deal. He's and then she was trying to think of something in her memory, like a very short phrase that Miss Marty Atkinson would have said. And finally, she said, he's the same in the courtroom as he is on the public streets. She's trying to say here that he doesn't act tougher with the people that he represents or questions in the courtroom. And Deal told her, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I mean. And here she says, I know what you mean, boy. Uh, she didn't say that, I'm sorry. The voice behind them said it. And this voice belonged to Mr. Dolphus Raymond. Now, do you remember who Mr. Dolphus Raymond is? He's the man that uh, loves to fit with the Negroes more than the- Yes, wife. exactly right, Alfred, thank you. He is the man that would rather live around the black folks than the white folks. And he even has several children with a black woman, okay? So he uh, he's peers around and he says, you aren't then hide it. It just makes you sick, doesn't it? He agrees with Deal after he had heard everything that Deal said, okay? So now we're going to uh, start on chapter 20. Does anyone have any questions to, up until this point? Is there anything or any part that you did not understand that we need to go over again? Okay, so let's move on. Ahmed Uta, would you read please? Yes, miss. Come on around here, son. I got something that uh, that will settle, uh, settle your stomach. As uh, more uh, as Mr. Uh, Dolphus Raymond was an evil man, I accepted his invitation re reluctantly, but I followed Dill so somehow. I didn't think Atticus would like it if we became friendly with Mr. Raymond, and I knew Aunt Alexandria won. Here, he said, offering Dill his paper a sack with, with straw in it. Take a good sip, I'll quieten you. Uh, Dill sucked on the straw, smiled, and pulled at length. Uh, uh, he, he said, Mr. Raymond, event, eventually, uh, uh, taking delight in corrupting a child. Uh, Dill, uh, you watch out now, I warn. They released the straw and grind. Scout, it's nothing but a Coca-Cola. Mr. Raymond set up against the tree trunk. He had been lying, uh, laying on the grass. Uh, you little folks won't tell uh, on me now, will you? It uh, ruined my repetition if you did. Uh, you mean all you drink in that sack Coca-Cola? Just plain Coca-Cola. Uh, yes, ma'am, Mr. Raymond noted. I uh, liked his smile. It was of leather, horses, uh, cotton cotton seed. He uh, he wore the only English riding boots I had ever seen. That's all I drink most of the time. Then you just pretend you're uh, you're, you're half. I beg your pardon, sir. 
I caught myself I didn't mean to be. Uh, Mr. Raymond felt not uh, not all offended, and I tried to frame a discreet question. Why do you do like? Uh, why do you do like you do? Uh, oh yes, you mean uh, why do I pretend? Uh, well, it's very simple. He said some folks don't like the way I live. Now I could say the hell with them. I don't care if they don't like it. I do say I don't care if they don't like it right, you know, but I don't say the hell with uh, with them, see. Uh, Dylan, I said, no, sir. Uh, I try to give, uh, I try to give them a reason, you see. Uh, it helps uh, folks if, if they can uh, latch onto a reason. When I come to town, with, uh, which is seldom, if I if I weave a, a little uh, and drink out of uh, this sack, folks can say Adolphus Raymond's in the clutches of whiskey. Uh, that's why he won't change his ways. He can't help himself. That's why he lives the way he does. That ain't honest, Mister Raymond. Making yourself out better than you you are red you you are already. It ain't honest, but it might, uh, it's mighty helpful to folks. Secretly, Miss, uh, Miss Finch, I'm not much of a drinker, but you see, they could never, never understand that I like, I live like I do, because that's the way I want to live. Okay, I'll I had stop. A I'll had stop right here for one second. Explain what has happened here. Oh, when uh, Dylan. Uh, uh, when Dill and the scout went out of the courtroom, uh, they met Mr. Dolphus Raymond, and Dill was uh, was a little bit sick from what had happened uh, with the Robin uh, with with Tom Robinson. So he gave him uh, uh, something to drink. Uh, uh, scout thought it was a whiskey, but it was actually Coca Cola. Uh, people uh, thought that he would always be drunk and this is why he almost lived his life with the the black people but however he would uh, drink coca-cola instead but but he's pretending to be drunk so people would say that he lived uh, with the black people because he's under uh, because he's drunk yes exactly right good job and he says here he they could never never understand that I live like I do because that's the way I want to live. Okay, good job. Ahmed. Go ahead and continue, please. Okay. Uh, because you're children and you can understand it. Right, he, right, right here. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I had a feeling that I shouldn't be here listening to this uh, sinful man who had mixed children and didn't care who knew it but he was fascinating i had never encountered a being who deliberately uh, pre, uh, per perpetrated perpetrated uh, fruit against himself but why had he entrusted us with uh, with his deepest secret i asked him why because you are children and you can understand it he said, and because I heard the one he jerked his head at that things uh, haven't caught up with that one instinct yet. Uh, let him get a little older and he won't get sick and cry. Maybe things, uh, uh, maybe things will strike him as being not quite right, say, but, uh, but he won't cry, not when he gets a few years on him. Cry about what, Mr. Raymond? Dill's uh, maleness was beginning to uh, assert itself. Cry about the simple hell people give other people without even thinking. Cry about the hell white people give colored to folks without even stopping to think that they are people too. Atticus says shearing uh, a colored man it's ten times worse than shooting a white man. I I muttered, say uh, say it's the worst thing you can do. Mr. Raymond said, I don't reckon it's uh, Miss Jane Louise. Uh, you don't know your 
uh, your paws, not a run of the mill man. Uh, it will take a few years for that to sink in. You haven't seen enough uh, enough of the of the world yet. You haven't you haven't even seen this town. But all you gotta do is step back inside the courthouse. Uh, which reminded me that we are we were missing nearly all of the Mr. Glimmer's cross examination. I looked at the sun and it was dropping fast behind the uh, store tops on the on the west side of the square. Between two fires, I could not decide which I wanted to jump into, Mr. Raymond's of, or the fifth logical uh, circuit court. Uh, come on, Dela, I uh, said you'll uh, you. You all right now? Yeah, glad to uh, to, uh, to meet you, Mr. Raymond. And thanks for the drink. It was mighty settling. Uh, we raced back to the courthouse of the steps up two flights of stairs and edged our way along the balcony rail. Reverend Sykes had saved our seats. The courtroom was still, and again I wondered where the babies were. Josh Taylor's cigarette was a brown speck in the center of the of his mouth. Mr. Glimmer was writing on one of the yellow pads on his table, trying to outdo the court report whose hand was jerking rapidly. Uh, shoot, I muttered, we missed it. Uh, Atticus was halfway through his speech to the jury. He had uh, event evidently... evidently. Oh pulled some papers uh, from his briefcase that rested beside his, beside his chair. Because they uh, were on his table, Tom Robinson was toying with them. Absence of any uh, corroborative evidence, this man was indicated uh, uh, on a capital charge and is now on trail for his life. I punched him. How long he's been uh, at it? Uh, he's just gone over the evidence, Jim whispered, and uh, we're gonna win. Scout, I don't, I don't see how we can't. He's been at it about five minutes. He made uh, it as plain as easy as well. Uh, uh, as I'd explained it to you, uh, you could have understood it even. Did Mr. Gilmer, nothing new, uh, just the usual. Hush now. Uh, we looked down again. Atticus was speaking easily with the kind of de detachment he used uh, when he di dictated a letter. Uh, we walked slowly up and down in front of the jury, and the jury seemed to be atten attentive. Their heads were up, and they followed Atticus' uh, route with what seemed to be a, a, per a percussion. I guess it was because Atticus wasn't thunder. Atticus paused, then, uh, then he did something he didn't ordinarily do. He, uh, he unhitched his watch and chain and placed them on the table, saying, with the court's permission, Josh Taylor nodded up. And then Atticus did something I never saw him do before or since, in public or in private. He unbuttoned his vest, unbuttoned his collar, loosened his tie, and took off his coat. He never loosened a scrap of his uh, clothing until he undressed at that time. And to Jim and me, this was the equivalent of him standing before a stork naked. We exchanged horrified glances. Atticus put his hands in his pocket and as he returned to the jury, I saw his gold collar button and the tips of his pen and pencil winking in the light. Gentlemen, he said, Jim and I again looked at each other. Atticus might have said scout. His voice had lost its identity, its detachment, and he was taking to uh, he was talking to the jury as if they were folks on the post office corner. Gentlemen, he was saying, I shall be brief, uh, but I, I would like to use my remaining time with you to remind you that this case is not a difficult one. It requires no minute stiffing of com uh, complicated facts, but it does require you to be sure beyond all reasonable doubt as to the uh, guilt of the defendant. To begin with, this case should never have come to trail. 
this case is simple as black and white. The state has no, uh, uh, not, uh, not produced one uh, iota of medi medical evidence to the effect that the crime Tom Robinson is charged with ever took place. It has relied instead upon the testimony of two witnesses whose evidence has not only been called into serious question on cross-examination, but has been flat, uh, flatly contradicted by the defendant. The defendant is not guilty, but somebody in, the, in this courtroom is. I have nothing but uh, pity in my heart for the chief, chief witness. Witness for oh. the state really doesn't does not extend so far as to her putting a man's life at stake, which she has done in effort to get rid of her own guilt. I say guilt, uh, gentlemen, uh, because it was guilt that uh, motivated her. She had committed no crime. She uh, she has merely broken a, a rigid and time-honored code of our society, a code so severe that whoever breaks it, it uh, is haunted from our mildest as unfit to live with. She is the victim of uh, cruel poverty and ignorance, but I cannot pity her. She, she is white. Uh, she knew full well the en enormity of her offense, but because her desires were stronger than the code she was breaking, she pers uh, persisted in breaking it. She persisted as her subsequent Reaction is something that all of us have known at one time or another. She didn't something. She did something every child has done. She tried to put the evidence of her offense away from her. Uh, but in, in this case, she was no no child hiding stolen co cont contraband. She uh, she struck out at her victim of necessity. She must put him away. F uh, from her, he must be removed from her uh, presence from this world. Uh, she must destroy the evidence of her offense. Okay, Ahmed, stop there. All right, uh, summarize the important points here. Uh, so after they finished with the uh, with Raymond, uh, they went back to the to the courtroom and they didn't miss uh, uh, much. Uh, and it was the time for. Uh, Atticus to uh, to start talking again about this um, uh, about the the about was um, this judgment. So he said that that uh, this isn't about guilt. Uh, that uh, and before uh, before he start talking, he uh, he loosened his uh, tie and took off his coat and unbuttoned his collar. That wasn't something that he normally do in his uh, normal life, except when he got to bed. So a scout and uh, Jim was um, uh, terrified of something new what would happen. Right. When he, when he started talking about the crime, he uh, said that uh, it's uh, it's nothing about the cross examination or uh, that Tom Robinson is guilty, and it's so obvious that uh, that's so obvious who's this guilt for. Uh, uh, he, he's he's saying that uh, uh, the mis uh, the the mistake of the this guilt is not about uh, uh, Tom Robinson or Maella. Uh, it's about the ignorance, uh, uh, and ignorance and the poverty they uh, they were living in. Uh, however, he was saying that she was a white, which shows that uh, nobody would uh, offend her because she was. Uh, white which showed the racism of the of the 